Hi, everybody. This is Tracy. You know how I love to bring you um, things that are going to help you, books and, and authors and new experiences for healing and how people use healing in different ways. We've, we've had music people. We have had authors here. Today, I'm, I'm going to bring an author to you. Her name is Elizabeth Garden, and she's written a book called The Tree of Lives. And this is a novel about a journey, a hero's journey of her character called Ruth, who like basically goes through um, surviving and triumphing over her family's crazy. Um, there were mental illness and, and an abuse and neglect and, and a family secret that was so interesting to, to, to read and listen and learn about. Um, Ruth's character, or the character of Ruth uses art to help herself heal and find her own happy place. And today we're going to talk to Elizabeth about um, the journey of writing this book and bringing it to you as a healing tool. So without any further ado, let's welcome Elizabeth. Thank you. It's going to be fun. Yeah, you wrote the Tree of Lives. There's a very big Tree of Lives book behind you. I've got my little copy here. Um, and, and your your book is, is a, a journey about your character, Ruth, who's um, survival and triumph over her family, mental illness and secrets. Um, how did you come to write this book? Pieces of the book have been with me for a long time. And I would just write stuff and put it away. Um, and then when I found out about the tragedy in the mid nineties, um, I thought this can't go unwritten about. It was just unbelievable. But it also, um, you know, writing is not what I did for a living. So it was sort of a journey in itself. And um, when I started working on it, sort of, uh, as I, I wasn't sure how to put it together, it was sort of like pieces. But then I got breast cancer diagnosis in, um, 2013. So then I thought, well, that's a deadline. It could be. And so then, you know, I, I thought it was important not only because I've been thinking about it for about 10 years. Um, I thought, well, at least uh, I can put my own story together in context with this situation, which was really unusual and explained a lot to me. So and, and I know um, Ruth's journey in the book was like a difficult journey. Um, ultimately, she ends up loving herself. So it's, there's, there's a, a good happy ending and, and, and motivation for all victims of abuse. But um, do you want to tell us a little bit about her journey? So Ruth was um, uh, abused and neglected in a very kind of subtle way, I guess, but sometimes not so subtle ways. But, um, you know, because everything on the outside looked wonderful. And um, only by comparing her life when she got a little older and as a sense of protection, she would not hang around the house or stay in her room where it was safe and do her artwork. Um, and I guess doing her artwork um, was her way of listening because she, she would have to, um, you know, imagine something in order to do a piece of artwork. Um, so that became a kind of a wide open channel for her. So as, as she, was as she grew and saw, you know, other people, how other people lived. Um, she was, she was, she would sort of listen to what, you know, what her artwork was trying to tell her, because I think it's sort of, uh, a lot of communication comes through you when you are doing artwork. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And, and there's actually, I'm going to hold this up. So people can see there's some absolutely beautiful drawings in the book. Um, they're in every chapter and they, they are done so well. I've never seen a book that has had so much, much art going through it, but it helps you really see the journey that she was on and the journey that she got through by doing art. Um, well, it wasn't so direct really because in, in, um, in art career, you have to do a lot of, like, I worked as an illustrator. So uh, I was able to use, um, the illustrations that just happened to appear in my life, but very uncannily how they fit in the story perfectly. It's, it's Luckily, I never threw things away. 
<laughs> that would be a good thing. If you lived in my family, you'd have two pictures of your childhood and nothing. Okay. Uh, like my son's life, who now has like 27 bins of artwork saved. Oh, great. He'll never do anything with it except throw it away one day. But um, <laughs> your book is now being used in France as a tool for adult survivors um, and workshops. How did that come about? And, and do you know what they're doing with it? I'm not quite sure how that lady got my book. Um, but uh, it was so gratifying to read that it's used for healing. It healed me, that's for sure. I mean, it really did. It, it Somehow putting stuff into words makes you see it. You're kind of removed from the situation. And, and then when you're writing about a character, that's, that's another layer of distance. And so you can kind of see, you know, uh, the story. And um, plus, for, I, I'm, you know, in a good place. So I feel, you know, like I got there. So the character kind of gets there. So uh, I think that that's what the therapist is having her patients do is, um, you know, showing them how that can happen. Right. It's done so well. I mean, just each chapter and, and the, the visualizations of, I could feel myself there. And in one of the chapters, you were talking about Darien, Connecticut, and, and I grew up just adjacent to that town. So it just rang so true for me. Everything about just being in that place, the way you describe everything, I, I could feel myself there. Not only that I had been there, but but I could feel it and, and, and your descriptions of everything was so thoughtfully done and, and it brings a unique spin on learning about abuse and, and, and the journey, the hero's journey. Ruth was the hero. She, she made it through. She's the protagonist. She, she, she made it. And, um, you know, ultimately she ended up having no contact with her family. So estrangement. Um, and, and that's a difficult decision for anyone to make in in a situation but with their family but ultimately it it did save her right yeah um because breast cancer too um you're so kind of bombarded with poison to in order to fight the disease and all that's left is the parts that keep working so you're not really willing to take in any more poison because you know what poison feels like so, um, but you know, when you're, you grow up with a diet of poison, you, it's part of your diet. You don't really know. In fact, you kind of expect it. And maybe that's what you, like you'll see in Ruth's life, she just sort of kept doing that, you know, kept finding the poison. But um, eventually, it, it kind of like what the process of writing the book makes you put it all down. I remember that, um, when I met my husband, it was on match.com and, um, he, it, you had to write what you wanted and also what you didn't want. So that's the, the, the boundaries of making a garden, um, protected from the outside world is boundaries. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Boundaries are such an important part of any relationship, but when you're in an abusive relationship, it, it's absolutely vital for your own healing and success, um, getting away from them. And if you can't, then making the rules for how people play in your life. And so many people um, struggle with that. And, um, you know, not that all victims are codependent or people pleasers, but they certainly have some lack of boundaries setting skills, which makes them vulnerable to having an abuser come into their life. Whether it's, you know, family of origin is where the patterns were set, but ultimately some of the choices that many of the survivors make are to be with the same type of person that they were trying to escape. Um, mostly because the person was cloaked in that, um, that charming, sweet, loving persona that wasn't real, you know? So understanding boundaries is such an important part of this. Um, when Ruth learned to love herself, how did her life change? Ruth was lucky because she had a wonderful career. And so she got a lot of positive input that way. And so she, she was proud of herself and she, you know, um, she used it to, to find her way in the world. So, but she was kind of on her own. I mean, she just had to figure it all out and she accomplished a lot. So, um, I think that's, that's how she built up her idea of herself. 
But also that visualization session that she had in the 80s told her a lot that is there that we don't see. You know, that there's a lot to dwell, to draw on. Right. That's kind of a pun. Mm -hmm. That's true, the artist yeah. thing. <laughs> um, so tell me how how can how can people find your book and um, and 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 what do you hope they can get out of it? Okay, it's on Amazon.com. Um, just type Tree of Lives. I think it's the third one, even though there's no other book called Tree of Lives. But um, and it's in audio and Kindle also, besides print. Um, and what was your second question? <laughs> um, what do you think that how people can, um, what they would get out of it? Um, a lot of different things. I think it's, there's a lot of stuff that's very topical and I think it's very relatable um, as a woman. Um, I'm an American woman and a woman this age, baby boomer, um, and um, someone who has certainly abused uh, people or people who were, were once and trying to make sense of things or still are and trying to figure it out. And, um, and also it's kind of, uh, it's, it's deep. I'd say it's deep. People are looking for something, um, with a little, you know, things, stuff to think about in there. Yeah. I, I loved the hero's journey. Um, it, it just, um, helped me get, have hope and, and light and, and excitement for the future. So, um, I'm going to encourage everyone to go and check out your book and every author I talk to from now on should have a sign behind them with their <laughs> book, because that is awesome. So um, I want to thank you for being on my show today and um, bringing your work and your journey and Ruth's journey into the hands of people like myself. It's a very big book guys. Um, and, and you're going to love it. it. It's really full of a lot of nuggets, a lot of truth and, um, and a lot of hope. So thank you so much. Oh, thank you. Thank you for sharing it. Appreciate it. Wasn't that great? I hope you enjoyed it. Um, the book is really like, you, you can't stop reading it. And it's, it's going to help you have hope and um, understand that you too will get through this. If you are looking for more support, please visit my website, NarcissistAbuseSupport.com. Um, we've got great resources for you to start your healing process. Maybe hook up with a support group near you. I'm a big, big advocate for finding a support group that is near you. Um, Go to NarcissistAbuseSupport.com, and if you're interested and you need a little help getting through the times or having things explained to you, um, I do coaching, and I would be happy to talk with you. You can get all that information on my website, and um, that's all we've got today. Go and get her book, and um, sit down and curl up with a good book this week, and, and see how your life can heal through reading the journey of Ruth. Thank you so much, and I'll see you again soon.